What is up everyone, today I'll be showcasing your team for the Ultra League, I just had so much fun running and it did very well as well, I did 3 sets with the squad, I went 4-1 3 times, so it did very well, is it a team I'd recommend? No, no, it's just not bulky, okay? Ultra League is a league where bulk is king, and this team is the opposite of bulky. We are running some of my favorite Pokemon, Heliolisk and Lurantis, which are just extremely squishy, and then Shadow for Alligator is not exactly bulky too, but it's a fun team, so let's just head right into the battles. Starting off with a Dragonite lead into my Heliolisk. This is, this is a very fine lead for Heliolisk. Heliolisk uh, is one of the very few Pokemon that can beat both uh, Dragonite and Feraligator, which is a, a, a common core at the moment. It's not that good for Dragonite though, if you can't get the debuffs. You really need to get a debuff on the first breaking swipe, and then you have the chance of getting to three breaking swipes. Since I didn't get the debuff on the first, I will not be able to get the three breaking swipes, uh, and I'll just have to settle for taking both shields. After I do that, I switch it to Feraligator, and now I have a shield advantage. Generally, teams with Dragonite lead, in my experience, have been kind of weak to Feraligator in the back, especially when you have a shield advantage, so I really make use of that here. My opponent switches out into their own Feraligator, just fine by me. Uh, this whole team is pretty good against Feraligator. I mean, I got my own, I got Heliolisk, which wins first Feraligator, and I got Lurantis, which, I mean, it's a grass type, it should win first Feraligator, but sadly, it is, it is not that good of a matchup. It's an alright matchup, but it's you're gonna see later. One Leaf Blade and Forge, does not knock out, and one Ice Beam pretty much does. But yeah, Lurantis is still still very cool. It's still very cool. You're gonna see, out goes a Registeel. This is one of the benefits of Lurantis over other Grass types. It has that Sewer Powder do so much damage for the Steel types like Registeel. So, first Sewer Power comes out now, does a good chunk of damage versus Registeel. We're gonna shoot this, uh, this attack up now. Because Focus Blast would knock out at this point. I'm expecting the Dragonite to come in. But this is why I over farmed as much as possible. First the Registeel. Because then I could outpace the Dragonite to a super power. Knock it out. Now I should get to a super power before the Registeel reaches a Focus Blast. I'm just going to store it. Because I'm double the buff now in my attack. There's no point in throwing my super power. So I'm just going to... Or I'd rather not. Because it would do less. So I just switch into my uh, Heliolisk. And now I'm not the buffed anymore. This super power should knock out or cl get close to. Over farm before I throw though, as I know I can. And this will knock out the Registeel. Let's go. Very, very nice game there. By the way, if you don't have a Lorantis, I think this team is actually very good with Verizon. I actually ran it for a, a bit with Verizon as well when Ultra League started. And I really, really do like that team. I think uh, Lorantis is fun, but it's, it's not very good. If you actually want a good team... I think you put Verizon in the back here, and you got a very, very solid line. Anyway, Warren lead. They, sh they threw the Ice Cold Spear, which I let go. Then I bait with the Breaking Swipe, which unfortunately they let go to. I think I should have just gone Thunderbolt there, because honestly, most trainers don't shoot against Heliolisk, because they think it's just Breaking Swipe. And Thunderbolt would have one shot there. But yeah, still not the worst situation. I built up to another breaking swipe, then I caught the Icicle Spear, all my Fragator. Now they bring out Giratina, which is just beautiful, because now my Lorantis avoids the Giratina, and yeah, you really, you really don't want to be in that matchup, trust me, as Lorantis. So, this is great. Unfortunately, I shoot my Ice Beam, and I don't think I'll be able to get to two more Ice Beams, so I'm baiting here. I get the shield out, and I, I'm not even gonna reach another Ice Beam, so... I gotta settle for a Hydro Cannon, but this is fine. I have a Breaking Swipe stored into my Heliolisk, so after my Feraligator goes down, I will just throw that, get rid of the Giratina, but then I like a turn. Don't get to fire off my Breaking Swipe, but at this point, I'm like, alright. My Heliolisk is already so low. I think the only chance I got here is if I just save that Breaking Swipe, bring out Lorentis, try to Fury Cutter down the Giratina, and turns out there's a Swampert in the back. So this is absolutely beautiful. We just let this Hydro Cannon go. We farm up as much as possible. Throw this Leaf Blade right before they can get to another Hydro Cannon. This will certainly knock out the Swampert, and now we've got so much energy to throw on the rest of the team. Out comes Giratina now. I know the Warrein is dry on energy. So I'll just shield this Dragon Claw just in case. We farm up some more to double Leaf Blade. And now we're looking very, very good. Even if the Warrein had an attack right here, Lorantis would definitely win the charge stack priority. But yeah, it doesn't. So it's an easy win. Another Leaf Blade comes through, knocks out the Warrein. Very, very, very nice. Okay. Next match, Gliscor. Bit of a core breaker. Should technically beat Heliolisk and Lorantis. But frankly, this is the best lead. Oh, uh, okay. I'm, I'm exaggerating here, but I love seeing Gliscor in the lead. I love seeing Gliscor in the lead because generally they're weak to Laurentis in the back 
or grass types. Like every time I've ran teams with Heliolisk, I usually have like Verizon in the back. And generally, they're very weak to that in the back. So as long as you can shield Earthquakes properly here, this is not that bad for Heliolisk either. I shoot the Earthquake there. That means I'll now be able to take a shield with Breaking Swipe. And we're even shields now. And at this point, if they throw an Earthquake, I will be able to farm all the way down before they reach a third Earthquake. And I come out with so much health and energy. Uh, sometimes they're able to get to a Night Surge here, which is not, not the end of the world. This is totally fine. You just let that go. The attack is, has been dropped as well, so this does nothing now. And I have a, a reasonably healthy Heliolisk with energy. Out comes Polyrath now. This is actually kind of tough for my team. But they let the Thunderbolt go. It does so much damage. Now I bring out for Relegator to try to go for a farm down. But, the, 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 but they switch in the Relegator of their own. That's fine. And I have an energy lead. They do have a shield advantage, so they use their first shield there. Totally fine with me. Totally fine with me. I should still be able to get to another. Shadow versus Shadow. You still need two Hydro Cannons to knock out. Can't farm is down yet. Because they will get to another attack. But same same deal with me. Honestly, I think they should have stayed in with their Polyrath just a little longer. Because they could have gotten more counter damage in. Which would have maybe given them a farm down here. But it would have been close. Uh, actually, I would have then probably reached a Hydro Cannon as well. So, probably not. They, are, they played this very well. They farm up to the max, which means they can now get to another Hydro Cannon before I'm even able to reach uh, a Breaking Swipe there. I didn't even do Volt Switch damage there, so that's crazy. I'll come spoiler right now. But I have my Lorantis. Unfortunately, Lorantis, this is one of the downsides. You can't really farm stuff down. Fury Kidder just does nothing. You could consider running Leafage, because then you can actually farm down water types. But I like Fury Cutter. It's better versus dark types. It's better uh, versus Cresselia. That's the main reason I have Fury Cutter. And, like, if I run Leafage, like, honestly, I may as well just run a different Pokemon, right? Like, the, the I may as well just run, a, like, Meganium or something. That's probably better than for that, like... Uh, grass and anti-steel coverage, or or maybe just Verizon, you know, like that. Then I'm then 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 uh, Lorentis would just be bad for Verizon. Whereas now it's a very unique Pokemon because it can beat Deoxys Defense and Cresselia with Fury Cutter, which is something that Verizon can't. Okay, and that is why we like Lorentis, right? Get those Leafage Lorentis out of my face. Okay, that's not allowed here. Anyway, next game. <laughs> next game. I'm sorry. I'm very very. Very certain on my uh, Laurentis moveset. Just like Heliolisk, Grass Node is not allowed, okay? It's Thunderbolt, Heliolisk, or Bust. Because Grass Node only beats one Pokemon, which is Swampert. And nothing else. For anything else, Thunderbolt is better. So that's why you run Thunderbolt on Heliolisk. Just don't let me any Swampert anyway. What's that? Swampert? I don't know. Never heard of her. Anyway. Lorantis. Look at look at look at this speed. Look at that speed. Able to get to two leaf blades before the Polarath can get to another icy wind. Also took an icy wind, by the way. Lorantis, not tanky, but not 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 squishy either. Get to the superpower first a Dragonite as well, because I, I overfarmed to the max. Bye bye. And now I make a grand mistake. Oh no. Oh no. Out comes Jellicent. And I should have stayed in. I mean I was double debuffed. But that's why. Uh, my attack and also once in my defense. That's why I switched. But I should have built up to a Leaf Blade before switching. Because I win charge attack priority versus Jellicent. And now because I didn't. This Jellicent will be able to Shadow Ball. Just barely farm down my Feraligator. And throw an attack into my Lorantis. Had I just farmed up to a Leaf Blade there. I would have won this game because I would have just farmed to Leaf Blade, get one Hydro Cannon onto the Jellison. My Feraligator would likely go down then, but then I would win charge deck priority with uh, my Laurentis over Jellison and win that game with a Leaf Blade. So unfortunate, but it is what it is. Anyway, next game, Annihilate Bleed. Super bad, <laughs> super bad for this team. It beats Heliolisk hard. It also beats Laurentis since it's resisting uh, Fury Cutters. And you need like two leaf baits to knock out. Besides that, it, most uh, Annihilate, I think, pack Ice Punch, which is super effective on Lorantis. Luckily, though, Radigator, really freaking good in this meta right now. And it's able to grab a shield from your little Nine Tails. Shield up, I'm feeling all right here. They're likely going to bring out the Annihilate right here, uh, which means I'll be able to Thunderbolt. Another reason for Thunderbolt, guys. No Grass Knot, okay? No Grass Knot allowed. Look at this. Look at this damage. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Brings the Annihilate into the red already. Now I'm going to shoot this up. I'm scared of Ice Punch, but it's just Night Slash. 
very unfortunate. This should also only be Night Slash though. So let this go. Offer this, this should pretty much be dry. So keep that in mind. They throw a couple counters. I throw my Leaf Blade. They're like two away from the next Night Slash, I'm pretty sure. They do throw it? Oh, they do throw it. They do throw it. And now they're dry. Okay, because they're going to switch out after this. I got to shield this again. Now, out comes Tapu Fini. Tapu Fini needs 14 turns to get to the first serve. So I, I just got to over farm as much as possible here. Throw my second. First one won't knock out. Second one I got to throw right before the next serve. This will knock out the Tapu Fini. And then, since the NIA is dry, I should be able to easily outpace it with my Leaf Blade. And that's a GG. That's how you beat massive core breaker lead right. It's just 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 speed of Laurentis. Made that so so difficult for my opponent. Let's go. Alright. Ampharos. Ampharos. This is uh interestingly, this is very debuff dependent how this goes. I do not get a debuff here, which means that I do believe they win zeros. Because two brutal swings will knock me out. But that's fine. Like honestly, that's fine with me. Oh, it actually catches on Verizon. Oh, yeah. Verizon kind of a core breaker here. This is another reason I got Fury Cutter on my Lorantis, because that makes this matchup better. All right. Still not good, though. <laughs> Still not good. I uh, Luckily, Verizon is not that common anymore. Uh, but I did face a, a few. I think I lost to one. But I also beat a couple. Because uh, you still have Ice Beam on Feradigator. Lorantis really isn't the worst, especially after you've debuffed it with with uh, with a Breaking Swipe. Uh, and, well, Heliodas sucks for it, but we're not going to talk about that. Anyway, a new superpower would not knock out straight up, so Leaf Blade first. Now I go for a superpower, because unfortunately I don't think the Leaf Blade would knock out. Also, I threw it on Charge Stack Priority, by the way. As, uh, well, I wanted to get as much energy as possible. To throw into the Ampharos afterwards. I didn't want the Ampharos to like farm me down. So I go into Heliolus now. Also I think they may be kind of weak to Verizon. Or not to Verizon. To Laurentis in the back. Seeing as they brought out an electric type for the grass type. Generally that's not really good matchup for electric types. So I figured it might be like Swampert in the back. And in that case. I want to keep my Laurentis for that. Anyway. We're just going to let Heliolus go down now. I'm going to farm this down with Feradigator. Because Feradigator with energy is just super super good. And now comes Polyrath. Now, this is problematic. This is this is problematic. Because uh, Polyrath uh, can take two Hydro Cannons here. This is probably why you should be... If you run Polyrath in this meta, it seems like regular may be the way to go. As you can take two Hydro Cannons from Feraligator. Like, if this was Shadow, that would be way worse for me. Anyway. Uh, since I'm debuffed there, I didn't wanna, really want to throw my Hydro Cannon. So I just do store one up. Then... I switch it to Laurentis, fire off a Leaf Blade, take the shield, throw this Hydro instantly into the Polyrath, and now I just gotta hope I can farm down this Polyrath before they can get to another uh, attack. Shoot this up. They bring out Ampharos now. They're giving me a win condition, because now I don't even have to border, border with farming down a Polyrath. I can just throw the Hydro Cannon and win this match. GG. Very, very nice. Okay, what do we have next? Empoleon. Now, this is a great start for me. Oh, this was a fantastic game. This was an absolutely fantastic game. Out comes uh, Kingdra now. This is great. Uh, my team very weak to Kingdra, honestly. Uh, well, actually, most of my team has play versus Kingdra. It's just not great for me. Dragons, in general, are not great for me. Get lucky there. I don't get the drop. I didn't. They didn't get my drop either, so it's kind of fair, I guess. Now we're going to go for another Breaking Swipe. I do get to drop this time, which is great. Hope for the farm down. I do get the farm down. I have two Breaking Swipes loaded. I'm guessing this is Empoleon Double Dragon. So I'm going to wait to see what comes in there. But I'm ready to throw the Breaking Swipe right as the Dragon I came in. And I should be able to get to another one as well. Don't get the drop again. That's fine. Go for the Breaking Swipe here. This is huge that I get this damage in. Because now I should be able to farm the Dragon I down with Feradigator. Again, no drop by the way. But it's okay. It's totally fine. We take the... I think I take the Dragon Claw here, right? Yeah, because I need to save a shield for Laurentis to, to take the draw pack. I go Sampoleon. I throw the Hydro Cannon into this. Because then it's going to be... I wasn't sure if it would be in super power range otherwise. It may be. Probably not. This is Ultra League. There's no charge stack that like one-shot anything. Pretty much. Especially like super power. It is a strong attack, but like not super strong. So the, the Hydro Cannon was probably necessary there to put it into super power range. Here I make a huge mistake. I thought Laurentis would win the charge stack priority versus Empoleon. So I go for that. But no. Empoleon wins it. 
Polarantis hangs onto the drill pack. We fire off the super power. This will knock out the Empoleon, and then I just have to hope that the super power debuffed is enough to take out the Dragonite. But with the Dragonite already in the red, should be good. Takes it out. Polarantis once again sweeping a team. Oh my goodness. This is a tough lead. Guzzlord into my Heliolisk. Frankly, my whole team kind of struggles with Guzzlord. When shields are down, it's fine, because I can hit it very hard with charge attacks, breaking swipe, ice beam, or super power, but I just can't really hit it with fast attacks. Full switch, shadow claw, both resisted, and fury cutter, even though super effective, is just not a very hard hitting fast attack. So seeing it in the lead is really, really bad. Still, I take it very, very low uh, with a t double, um, double breaking swipe though. And now I'm able to bring out Lorantis. I was just going to eat that energy on Lorantis and farm down. But they bring out Forradigator, which is fine. And I even go for the Hydro Cannon there. So that's great. I can just start going for Leaf Blades now. One Leaf Blade does not knock out, however. So that makes this matchup kind of iffy. Seeing as they brought Forradigator straight into my Lorantis, though. I, I think they may not be super strong to Lorantis. I think they may be double water. That's what I'm thinking. That's a team I've seen very, very often with Guzzlord. Guzzlord double water. If they would have had like a fire type in the back behind Guzzlord, I don't think they would have brought their Feradigator into Lurantis. It's what I'm trying to say. Because that's just such a risky play. So I even let the Shrine Claw go. And it's a freaking Scatterdurge. Are you kidding me? If I would have played this game just like a potato and I would have stayed in with my Grass type versus the Feradigator, I would have would have been so fine. But I decided, I decided to try to be smart. And... Save my Lorantis. Turns out that wasn't very smart at all. Yeah, GG. Well played by my opponent. They definitely faked me out there by switching out the Fred Edge into Lorantis. So that was a good play by them. GG. All right, next game. Tentacruel lead. Great lead. Out comes Greedent. Greedent is a massive problem for this team. This is why I suggest that if you want to play a good team and you like, kind of like this team, you play Verizon instead of Lorantis. As that will make Greedent so, so, so much easier to deal with. Now it's not. I decide to stay a little bit, get a little bit of chip with the Volt Switchers, take the Bullish Ammo to Heliolisk, then bring out Lorantis. Unfortunately, though, Double Leaf Blade still does not knock out, so I'm forced to drop my uh, defense and attack with the Super Power to knock out the Greedent. That's fine, we did get rid of it now, uh, and I can still align my Heliolisk to the Tentacruel. I get off a Leaf Blade here, too. Since it's a buff, not gonna do that much. Also, it's a Tentacruel, so it was never gonna do much. Tentacruel does have farm here, but because I also have farm, uh, I get to the Thunderbolt before they're able to fire off their own charge stack. And I bait with a Breaking Swipe. They do shield it, that's great. No drop for me, that's that's fine, honestly. Because uh, even with drop, Scald would knock me out, so that's not very game-changing at all. They drop my attack, but that's okay. I got Thunderbolt. I got Thunderbolt, and they may not know I have Thunderbolt. They may think it's Grass Knot, and now that my defense is dropped, or my attack is dropped, they may not even have knocked out. So they let that go. Out comes Guzzlord now. That's a problem for my team. But now shields are, well, they're not down. But there's only one shield. And I breaking swipe them. I get the drop. I don't know if that's huge. But what the breaking swipe did do is bring this Guzzlord into range where an ice beam will definitely knock it out. So I think I'm looking good here. I can take the first Dragon Claw. Uh, I didn't want to shield the first attack just in case it was Crunch. And it has the potential to drop my defense so yes my opponent at that point also knew that the only way they were winning that game is if they no shield the hydro cannon so that was a good play by them not using that shield but yeah i also knew that i the only way to lose it was by throwing a hydro cannon so i just i just was just gonna go double ice beam and i win that game let's go that was the final battle hope you guys enjoyed again uh this is more of a fun team but i think it can definitely work if you replace Lorantis with like Verizon. Or, or maybe, uh, I think with Scatter Dirge also works. I've got so many Helios videos on my channel right now. Frankly, I think it's the best Pokemon in the game. And pretty much any, like, Grass or, or Ghost type in the back works very fine. So, yeah, anyway. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Good luck with your battles, trainers.